This is my last lecture. So the thing I love about life now is that you can capture everything with a camera. I have such a passion for photography and I love being able to capture certain moments in life, pausing them, remembering them forever. They get to be keepsakes that you can put in an album or hang on your wall as constant reminders of what was. When we were tasked to write this last lecture, I, I was so lost. Like, I was like, uh, so what are my lessons that I've learned through life? I don't know. And I got on my mom's phone, because she has pictures back from like 2010 on her phone. And I just started scrolling through all of these pictures and it hit me. Like all of these lessons just hit me. I just, I was looking back at everything that I've been through and everything that I've done and they all just came to me very naturally. There are a lot of lessons that I've learned and the biggest one is that it'll all be okay. It'll all work out. So, my first category, your buds will blossom. So, I, my life, I have moved around a lot. I lived in Indiana, and then I moved out to Colorado, and then I moved back to Indiana. <laughs> and in that span, I moved to six, seven different schools. And with every change, I never stayed close to old friends. So I had to make new friends every single time I moved. And that was really, like, it wasn't hard in the beginning because I was young and I was like, oh, I can make friends with anybody. But then as I kept moving, it kept getting harder and harder and harder because I kept having to leave people. And I was sad, it was hard. I've learned that these buds in your life on this flower will bloom when they need to. Your friends will come into your life as you need them. UC was the hardest for me. I came in middle school in sixth grade and I was so lost. I remember walking up to a teacher and I said, I have no idea where I'm going. I literally just moved to Liberty yesterday. Like my house wasn't even unpacked. I got clothes and backpack and I came to school. And the teacher just looked at me and said, well, everybody's in the same boat. Nobody knows anybody. Like, the schools just came together, and I was so lost. And I just looked at her, and I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> because I really, I really needed a friend right then to show me what to do. And then I think later that day, I met my first friend, and that's Maddie Hoke. I was in study hall, and the teacher said like was calling roll call and said maddie hoke and i was like hoke that's my mom's maiden name so i went up to her after class and i asked her hey are you related to gina hoke or well not G it was gina cannon at the time but she said yes and it was cool because we figured out that we were cousins and we instantly became friends and friends came easily like more easily um, throughout the three years and I found probably my closest friends in eighth grade just like the strongest relationships were in eighth grade I'm thankful for that time because while we're not all still like I'm not really close with all of those people anymore I'm still close with a few and they made that time special and I look back at that and I am just so grateful for the times that we had because I cherish those memories. And even if, like, I don't look back at it and be like, oh, we're, still, we're not friends anymore, so I'm going to forget about that. That's not how I view life. Like, they made that time good, so I'm going to keep it that way. I learned over all of these moves that change is okay. Change will happen. And it may be rough, and you may feel alone, but... The right friends will come along at the right time 
the right people will turn up in your life at the right time. You just need to trust. <laughs> and people come into your life for a reason. But sometimes they're only meant to be in your life for a short amount of time. And it's okay to let go of people that aren't meant to be in your life anymore. Or they made one time good and they're just, like if you're starting to fall apart and you try to make it work but then it just doesn't, it's okay to let go. You will find more people and more people will come along to help you grow in your life. And I really stand by that. My second point is divided yet united. So when I was seven, my parents divorced and that was really hard. It's kind of what started all the moves, like not necessarily, but more happened because of it. And when in those times, like I mean, my parents fought and, but in that time, like I had a lot of anxiety and it always made me very anxious when they would argue or, oh, we have to move or, oh, I need to make new friends. And it just, it felt very like, I had two different lives kind of, but it was still one. It was just divided. But then my mom made, met Jason Harvey and he had two wonderful kids, Gwendolyn and Logan. I would not be where I am right now if I didn't have that relationship or that bond. If I had never met them, I probably wouldn't have been doing 4-H right now. I probably wouldn't have horses out in my pasture. I wouldn't have experienced a farm life that I so wished I could get back because I had it in Colorado and then it died off once my parents got divorced when I just yearned for it and they're the best step siblings I could have ever asked for Jason is an amazing stepdad and I'm just forever grateful for that bond and the memories that I have like I wouldn't have met those people if my parents hadn't gotten divorced like I thought about that a lot like meeting them and then my dad met my stepmom Michelle and that was just like a blessing too it's just it's a whole nother aspect of life because I have been so used to the country lifestyle and stuff and then they got married and then they live in Carmel now and I get the best of both worlds because I get to experience life up there with them and I learned so many lessons and the love that comes from both of them and the support like I just I get support from both sides of my family and like it's like double the support now <laughs> since I have two um two sets of parents I guess if you want to say and I really like that dynamic like I I don't think I'd want it any other way even though it's hard at times it's good because I, I love them all so very much. So the point of divided yet united, you may div be divided as a divorced family, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay divided. You can come together. It's, it's okay to come together. And honestly, it's a blessing to have two sides. It really is. I get the best of both worlds. My third point is, thanks to good old Maury Schwartz, love each other or perish. And this really resonates with me because all of my life, I've had the best role models of the absolute true definition of unconditional love and that is because of my animals I have always had animals in my life whether that be horses cows dogs pigs anything I've had so many animals 
and you just there's such a bond that happens between you guys and or like between me and an animal like if when I'm on a horse's back it's like you guys have to be connected as one they feel your emotions they understand you they they you are on their back you're controlling them and they have a mind of their own too so like you have to work together to be able to do anything and a dog is such a good example I have a dog right now and his name is Tucker and he's like a child to me like I could do anything and he will still be here he will always he's so loyal and he's always by my side right now he's laying next to me he's always there and they are the perfect definition of unconditional love they love you for all of you no judgment no nothing it's it's just you and in my room i think i love preaching about love and kindness my motto is always there's power in kindness but i have little reminders around my room as i have a little um board thing that says choose kindness i have a little like wall decoration that says do small things with great love and i have a little um it has confetti in it it's a glass frame that has confetti in it and it says spread kindness like confetti and i just i love having these reminders in my room because it is so important to love each other and to treat each other with kindness that's all we ever want and we want the same back so if you expect that then you need to give it too and i just think that there's so much power in it like i said before really it is it trumps all compassion trumps all people just want to feel cared for and it makes you feel good when you're happy too and like you share kindness so i'm with maury love each other or perish we're all in this life together so we might as well my fourth point and this one came from brad snyder but Take 24 hours. Brad Snyder said to me multiple times when something bad happened in my life, he would say, the time is now, let's just say 426. You have 24 hours to scream, cry, yell, complain, be mad, get all of that pent up emotion out for 24 hours. That's all you have. And then once that's up, it's gone. You can't, you can't look back on it. You have to detach yourself. And you need to look forward. You need to look, this is what I need to focus on now. That's my next goal. You need to put whatever you were going through, all of those emotions that you were supposed to let out in those 24 hours, they're now gone. You can't look back at them. And that literally is the best advice I've ever gotten from somebody. It has helped me tremendously every single time with no fail i've had a lot of track upsets and every single time i get bad news he's like all right so what time is it it's 3 30 all right you have until 3 30 tomorrow to get everything out of your system and once that's up you have to be done with it you can't complain you or i mean like not like that but you just detach yourself from it. Don't fret on it. You just, you need to utilize the full 24 hours to fully get out your emotions. Because it's so important so that you can detach from it. You need to feel it fully to detach from it. That's also from Maury Schwartz. But you don't want to waste your time in those 24 hours. And the more you worry about something, the less you'll spend focusing on something more important right <laughs> so the fifth one this is totally a proper grammar but it works dirt don't hurt to go along with this 
just say it for everybody. You will fail. Let me say that again. You will fail. It's inevitable. You will. Things will go wrong. I had a, a track season that wasn't my favorite. Uh, I really wanted to run track all four years of my high school career. I had big plans for myself. I had so many goals set and I wanted to accomplish them all. But after a good first season, I started to have pain in my lower left leg and I was like, eh, it's okay. Over the summer I rested and I let myself take a break and ran a few meets here and there. And then I got to sophomore year and I ran cross country just fine. And we were like, all right, this is the year. We're going to start early. We're gonna practice really hard. And I went hard for about two months. I was in peak shape. I was so ready to just nail it on the track. And we got to the first week of official practice and I started to feel my leg again. I tried to push through it and then it eventually got to the point where I had to go to the doctor and it turned out I partially tore a tendon in my leg. I was on crutches for that season. Junior year, I had a stress fracture uh, that happened because I took a risk and I played volleyball. And I caused a stress fracture in my foot and it took forever to heal. It took the whole school year. I was on crutches for 13 weeks. I missed my season, but I persevered. I had all kinds of dirt built up on me and I was getting on that track because I was supposed to, by doctor's orders, like the 13 weeks would be up before the end of the season. So I woke up at 5 a.m. three times a week. I drug my butt over to the Miami Rec Center and I practiced in the pool. I swam. My coach met me there every single day, my dedicated coaches. They were so awesome. And I worked my butt off. I really tried to get myself back into shape and I really wanted to be back on that track. So I took it upon myself to get up wipe off all the dirt that I had on, uh, that I had on me and I did it. I I got up and I worked for it and I ran. I ran the last 3 meets of my season and that that was a big feat for me. If you get up, brush your dirt off, you'll be even stronger than what you were. Persevere. Just persevere through it all because you will fail. But as long as you persevere through it, you'll be okay. My sixth and final point, trust the plan. Always trust the plan. And don't you dare stop believing that there is a reason for everything. There is, there is a plan. I can't stop saying that because I have looked back on my life so many times and it's like, oh yeah, huh, that happened perfectly. There were that, that really, those people came into my life at the perfect time, right when I was down, right when I was struggling with friendships and where I belong in life. They came along and they showed me God and they showed me love and compassion and kindness and they are some of the most kind people I've ever met. And that uh, really touches my heart. Young Life is a special place for me. But there's also a song that I listen to and these words speak volumes, and it goes right with trust the plan. So in the song, it's, it's there will be another one. And the lyrics go, it hurts to lose something you can't have back, but take a good look around at the good things you still have. And then later in the song, it says, good things will happen, bad ones will too. So remember that as they happen to you. And I just, I love that. It's so good and it pertains to right now as we're going through a pandemic. We'll never have this time back. It won't, it won't come back. That doesn't mean we can't make the most of it. And as we're sitting here, we're like, well, I don't have this, this, and this, but then you could be like, well, I do have my family. 
I keep in touch with my friends. I'm in a Bible um, group that never would have happened if this hadn't have happened. And there's just a lot of good things that are also happening. While you could get stuck up in the bad, you also need to let yourself have a break and be like, well, I do have this, this, and this that's good. Because they're always goods coming. It really is. And sure, it looks bad in the moment, but it'll get better. Yeah, it'll get better. So when I was looking back at my life, I found myself asking, like, why do I have to move so much? Why did my parents divorce? Why couldn't I make friends when I needed them the most? And it's just, I look back at it and, like, there's so much good that came out of these times of confusion. My parent, like I, like I touched on with my divorced parents, each one, it's it just opportunities came from all of these different changes. Every move, I met new people, I met great people, and if I had never moved, I wouldn't be sitting here making this last lecture. <laughs> like, it's just crazy to think of the good that's come out of everything. And everything's fallen into place when I thought that it wouldn't. It has. I've set myself up so nicely and I'm going to IU to pursue something that I'm so passionate about. And that's all I ever wanted. And it's all falling into place. And it really is all part of the plan. And I just say, trust what is coming because good things are coming and the struggles that you're going through will only make you better and stronger. And I truly, truly believe that. So as I close this out, I'm gonna ask, do you see the head fake? As I was growing up, I was often confused. And as I'm going through this, I've mentioned a lot that I look back on my life and I realized that good things came out of the struggles. And the head fake in mine is I'm talking to my past self. I would have loved the advice that I just gave to you guys. Because it, I, maybe I wouldn't have listened. I probably would have been like, no, it's, it's pretty bad right now. <laughs> like, how do you, what do you mean it'll get better? But it does, it really does. And I'm a strong believer that you need to look at the good in life and better is coming. And I'm gonna finish this off with what a good friend once told me. You just gotta believe. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my last lecture.